guys welcome back to my channel my name is Amarie if you are new here so today's video um, I kind of just wanted to hop in before I started the video and kind of explain what happened today so this morning we went to the Bishop Museum of Nature and Science in Bradenton Florida it is our second time being there but it was so nice today my boyfriend didn't want to just stay in the house all day so we went there we actually did something different we went to the planetarium which you'll see in this video but it was fun um and i kind of just wanted to document it all for you guys and i hope you enjoy don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below we'll see you next video death a former the former ninth planet is now a dwarf planet part of the reason why or one of the reasons why we thought of as a different object is the nature of its strange orbit it's actually a member of one of these things it's a kuiper belt object these chunks of ice here that make up the kuiper belt is like saying yeah this little stretch of beach in california is called malibu beach but that actually is the part of the entire west coast and so the kuiper belt stretches all the way out to here and then fully envelops the sun in what's known as the Oort cloud. A full light year across, these chunks of ice occasionally fall towards the sun, because if you're out here, down is that way. If you're out here, down is that way. So as they fall, they fall towards the sun, and they become comets. There's Aldebaran, 65 light years away, eye of Taurus the bull. There's the Hyades star cluster. This represents a relatively young clump of stars, and when I say relatively young, I mean they're toddlers at 650 million years of age. 300 stars, 150 light years away. You're probably more familiar with their mythological half-sisters, the Pleiades, otherwise known as the Seven Sisters. 450 light years away, it actually represents over a thousand stars. These very young stars are only 100 million years old. 
at the time of the dinosaurs, these stars were born, what they haven't done once yet is one galactic orbit. It takes 250 million years for the Milky Way to rotate once. Our Earth and Sun has been around for 20 orbits. The Pleiades haven't even been around for one yet. They're very young at 100 million years of age. Now those are stellar infants. We've seen stellar toddlers, stellar infants, and now we're gonna see stellar newborns are born in gas clouds. In fact, you can think of it this way. Hydrogen gas is to a star what snow is to a snowball. These dark clumps of what is known as molecular hydrogen, the very name should give it away. When you talk about a molecule, you're talking about a group of atoms. When we say something is molecular hydrogen, we're just simply saying hydrogen atoms are clumping on themselves, kind of like snowflakes clumping on themselves. And if snowflakes clump, what are they on their way to becoming? Snowballs, or in this case, is hydrogen atoms clump, they're on their way to becoming stars. And in these dark columns of cold molecular hydrogen, stars clump together to form the nucleus of stars. And as they accumulate material, they radiate energy and cause their surrounding gas clouds to glow. Now we're gonna peel all this gas layers back like a pomegranate fruit and reveal some stars buried inside. These stars are only two million years old. In another 10 to 15 million years, some of them will go supernova, the rest of the stars will radiate enough energy, they will push away and just irradiate all the gas away and then what will be left behind like an unwrapped Christmas present will be just a clump of stars, a star called the star cluster. We've seen the early stages of stellar development, stellar toddlers, infants, and newborns. We're gonna to go to the opposite, we're gonna look at a stellar corpse. When a star like our sun, a yellow dwarf, expires, it runs out of material and starts to eject all of its inner parts and become outer parts. And those outer, outer parts glow and they leave behind something called a planetary nebula. This is called the ring nebula, 2200 light years away, it's one of my favorite objects to observe in the telescope. You can clearly see why they call it the ring, but as we get a little bit closer, you'll realize its true nature. It's really a bubble. It's a bubble of atomic material. It's like an unraveling baseball. If you've ever done that, it's just miles and miles of absurd garbage inside of a baseball. This is all the atomic material, like a giant ball of yarn has been unraveled and glowing from the compact core called the white dwarf. Now we can't see the white dwarf here in this particular planetary nebula. Looking back, that's the Earth, by the way, and the Sun, 2,200 light years away. The Ring Nebula is one example of planetary nebulas. I want to take you to another one, another compact star, but this one's called the Cat's Eye Nebula. But what I want you to think about before we get there is we traverse across the galaxy, spraying material outward as it dies. This is the Cat's Eye Nebula. And what we see here are giant helical structures like the spray from a sprinkler as the star was dying, spraying material out over hundreds of thousands of years. It's now left behind the structure that we call the, the cat's eye. But all of this stuff was all the material that was once inside, and now what's left behind is the crushed core called a white dwarf. That's a carbon and oxygen ball, tight ball of atoms that will glow for billions of years, causing the rest of the gas clouds to glow. What makes this incredible is that you can actually see that white dwarf in telescopes. Now, White dwarfs is a type of what's known as compact star. This is like saying a stellar corpse. There are three kinds. 90% of the stars will leave behind a white dwarf. Some stars are big enough to explode and they leave behind neutron stars. Some are so big, they leave something else behind. We're gonna visit one here in the center of the galaxy. We've been on our way there for a few moments now. It goes by the benign name of Sagittarius A star. We also know it as the supermassive black hole. Its gravity is so strong, it just stopped us. It's gonna yank us over. And the black hole itself was well, impossible to see because it's smaller than an electron. And it's at the center of that sphere of nothingness. The sphere of nothingness represents the point in space where once you go beyond it, nothing can get out. No information, no light, so we see a sphere of nothingness. The material around it represents planets and stars that have been disassembled into their constituent atoms swirling around like a whirlpool down the drain getting towards the edge, the point of no return, once they cross over into the black hole, never to come out. Except, of course, for us, we can come out the other side. Now, mathematically, we really don't understand what's going on inside of a black hole. The extreme gravity is very confusing, but on the outside, we can understand. This is called gravitational lensing. What looks like the bent brim of a hat is actually flat everywhere. It's like you're looking through a crystal ball and it makes what you see over here show up over there and what's over there show up over here. It's twisting because space-time bends and light follows the path like a train follows the track. 
that extreme twisting of gravity is caused by something smaller than an electron that has the mass of four million of our suns, of which is right there. One of the 400 billion stars that make up the entire Milky Way galaxy. 100,000 light years across, this is our Christmas ornament. And prior to 1925, we thought everything in the universe was inside of this. And we were looking at fuzzy little patches of light and thinking that they were right over here. But Edwin Hubble measured the distance to one and found it wasn't right there. It was way over here. He found a whole other galaxy. And once we knew we were looking at other galaxies, we started mapping out billions of them. And it started to reveal that the universe was filled with galaxies. It's like discovering that your tree is not alone. You're part of a huge forest.